Well, welcome back, Murray. This is our, Pastor Murray, sorry, um, our third instalment of our podcast series. Yes. And it's if you've missed out on one and two, I encourage you to jump back just to get some context. And as we refer back to, really, we've been talking discipleship. Um, I think week one, we spoke about identity. Yes. And then last week, emotional needs. And this week, we're looking at belief systems. Belief systems, yeah. And, you know, you're the expert. So oh, I, I don't throw... know the expert, but <laughs> had some experience of believing. Yes. And, so... and just understanding people. And what I love about you, Murray, is often you'll describe things and you go, oh, yeah, that is the way we think. Or I see that not just for myself, but for those around me um, and how, how we tick. And it's that understanding that helps us, I think, function stronger. Oh, yeah, and better yeah, with awareness. Yeah. Um, Dr. A. Andrews instilled in me that there's three questions that people ask. Like mm-hmm. number one is, do you know me? Because lots of people, it's very, don't assume that you know me, mm. but do you know me? That's a big, that's an intimacy thing. That's a belonging question. So do you know me? We're all asking that. Do you know me? And then the next thing is, if, do you know, if you know me, do you understand me? Mm. So you might know me, but you might misunderstand it or make assumptions about why I do what I do. And then the third question, people, is, okay, if you know me, you understand me, can you help me? And when we start to go on the journey of discipling, we need to be able to be able to operate in those three, answer those three questions for people so they feel comfortable being who they are and so I'm allowed to be known, which is a whole other thing, being vulnerable, mm. which means people need to be safe. Um, great books to read are by Dr. Brené Brown on uh, the, yeah. the Power of Vulnerability. Love it. Amazing mm. revelation. Mm. Um, I think one of the most watched TED Talks on the planet. Yes. So if you haven't seen that, watch that, which talks about being vulnerable, which mm. means you're going to have to let people know you. Mm. That's good and bad. And then that's then the risk. So once then I know you, then I learn to understand you. I understand why you do what you do. Mm. And it's very it's it's funny, the more I work with people, I the less I judge, the less I'm shocked, the less because when you when you understand a person what's driving them, mm. I would understand why they would drink. I would understand why they might it sounds terrible, why they might have an affair. I'm not excusing any of that, but I understand what would drive them to that. Yeah. Why a person would do porn. Why would mm. you, why would that person do porn? Uh, why would that person get addicted to whatever behaviour, mm. whether it's gambling or shopping or all those sort of things? Why? But then you start to understand why that is. And when you understand that, you can apply mercy, mm. true mercy, because you're not understanding. You know, I think when you see Jesus' interaction with people that were caught in sin, yeah. when people would vow, you know, like people, I will never deny you. And Jesus goes, oh, really? <laughs> the problem is, Peter, I know you and I understand you and I've prayed for you mm. because you're about to be sifted like wheat. Yeah. But I understand what you're driving, you're people pleasing. You see, mm. people, you see Peter's temperament, like we've talked about before, a real what I would call like a feeler doer. Mm. So really driven by people pleasing mm. and needing to be the good guy. So when people confront him with rejection, oh, you know Jesus? Oh, I don't know him. You know, no, you know, so he, but Jesus understood it. Yeah. And so later on, that great conversation with, with Peter, do you love me? Mm. Do you love me? And see, that's the only way you, you, you overcome that rift in a relationship is, is that, do you love me? You might have been ashamed, but do you love me? And he gets back to that because he understood people. He understood Peter and he was able to help him. Mm. And that truly is, if, when you disciple people, you have to be able to do that. And so when it comes to a belief system, um, because we are made to believe and what we believe drives us. Yeah. Do you know? So... And very much our belief system comes from our relationships. So that's often why you get families that are Ford family or a Holden family, a surfing family, a sports family, not necessarily because of talent or ability or budget. It's because there's a belief system in there. Yeah, yeah. This is is what we believe 
is important mm. because beliefs create values which then create behaviour. Yeah. It's interesting as you grow up, you know, thinking... You've grown up, Lou. I don't... That's questionable sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> To You're the, on the journey of growing. I, yeah, as you, but you reflect back on. For instance, here's a, a basic example of what you're saying. I think I don't really. I'm not a big boating person, right? I think yes. if I, cruises, I think I, I'm like I would hate to go on a cruise. But then I think back and really, my dad and mum didn't like cruises, you know. And so then you think, well, do I hate cruises? I've decided that I, and particularly after the COVID stuff, I'm like, this confirms. <laughs> I don't want to go on a, a cruise. But but that's come out of really my family environment and their belief system yes. around, you know, those things. Around a certain thing. Yeah. And then just reflecting and think, is this really, is this a right belief system as well? Obviously, when you come down to more serious ones rather than that. Yeah. Or you and can reflecting. see how yeah. Yeah. racism, mm -hmm. all sorts of things come from mm -hmm. those sort of beliefs that certain people are like a certain way. Yeah. Not based on truth, maybe fact, maybe some experiences, yes. but not a true representative no. of what it really is. And so when you come back to, and you've got to think that it's like words create thoughts, which create emotions, which create a belief. So if I, if I start to create a pattern, which is the whole Carolyn Leaf, the whole thing mm. of like, um, elasticity within our mind and reprogramming the brain is richly what you're doing is recreating a belief system because the belief system is more like a, a default. It's not necessarily a slow, clunky process. It's an immediate. I like that. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, I, so I have to go on the journey of deconstructing and constructing. But the easiest way to deconstruct a belief system is to overwhelm it with another one. Mm. So if you like to find a greater attraction than, than the one you have for something. So uh, w when you have that, it makes it a lot easier to change a belief system. Uh, a great book by Dr. Jim Wilder uh, is mm. called The Rare Leader, uh, which is an acronym, R-A-R-E, Rare Leader, which he talks about in changing a belief system is that, and again, I came across him um, through studying joy and yeah. he talks very much about joy as a, an underlying, if you like, uh, conduit or tool to recreate a belief system because we learn and reprogram faster when we're joyful than we do when we're not joyful mm. because when we're trying to do it as a works thing, it's very difficult because it's kind of like the old additive, uh, whatever you like. There's a story of like um, a hermit came into a village and he asked everybody to, um, oh, what, he, what he did, he bought it this little copper pot and he poured dirt into it and he stirred it around. And out of it, when he poured the cup out, there were gold. There was gold in the dirt. So he said, "Well, if you, if you like, I will show you how to use this to chant certain words and to do this. If you'll give me all the gold in the village, I will give you this, and you'll be able to make all the gold you want." So they were like, "Yes, let's do this." So he said to them, "You know, okay, here's the pot. You need to get a certain amount of dirt, put it in, you stir it anti-clockwise, and you need to say these words over it, mumble it to yourself while you do that." And then he gave them the pot and he took all their gold. And just as he was about to leave the village, he turned over. But whatever you do, when you do this, do not think of the red-faced monkey. <laughs> and, of course, what happens when everybody tried to do it, they defaulted to the very thing that would stop them from mm. getting the gold. So what we have to do is because in our belief system that what gets our focus gets us. Yeah. And so if I focus on my problem, my problem gets me. So sometimes what we're doing is like if I'm sin conscious, I'll become sinful. Mm. But if I become God conscious, I become godly. 
It's so funny. I actually heard someone last night talking about on an Instagram live and it was saying when you're riding a bike and you're like, don't hit the pole, don't hit the pole, don't hit the pole, <laughs> hit the pole. Yes. And that was exactly that principle as instead of focusing on what not to do, it's really focusing on God yeah, it's focusing that helps on. us not do those things. And I and that in my early discipleship journey is very true. Those things just begin to fall off yes. as you just become more immersed in God. You immersed don't have to think about I've got to stop doing this and I need to walk away from that. And as a discipler, I think that's important. Yes. Because disciples can become really focused on, well, Murray, stop doing this. And then you're going to become, you know, a better Jesus follower. Yes. And becoming behaviour focused as opposed to immerse yourself in God, believe, find these promises, this is true about you, digging out the word of God and, and them focusing on God will help them be set free from those things. Oh, absolutely. See, yeah. Um, yeah, Christianity is not behaviour modification. Yes. It's yeah. not a moral code per se. It's yeah. not the nth degree of it. It's not that um, because that goes to, oh, I'm a good person. Mm. God should let me into heaven. Mm -mm. You only get into heaven because of who you know. Yes. Which is like breaks all those rules. Yeah. So we've got to understand that God, that Jesus isn't helping us. He's replacing us. Mm. His life is becoming my life. Yeah. And it's, and it's really in any situation, it's not what do I do. It's asking the question, what does Jesus believe about this right mm. now? What is, how does Jesus see this? You know, not not even on how I see it. What does Jesus believe about this? What mm. does Jesus believe possible right now? Well, then that opens up a whole world of opportunities. True. That's right. How does Jesus see COVID nineteen? Mm. How does he see my isolation? How does he? What does he believe about this? And so, when I start to open up my heart and think about that, because it's not. Because often I love that and I love the old, remember when we had those wristbands, what, what would, would Jesus, Jesus do? do? Yeah. That's great. But again, that's behaviour. It's doing. Yeah. It's doing. But it's what does Jesus believe? Mm. It, it, that's the thing. And see, it, you can easily see what people believe. And even in yourself, you can see what you believe by just looking at your behaviour. Yeah. In a sense. Mm. So do I believe in prayer? Simple. Do you pray? Yeah. Do you, do you believe that God hears you when you pray? Well, that will look at the way you pray. Mm. Look at your emotional response in prayer. Is it knowing that, yeah, God is here listening to me mm. and I have his full attention? Or am I somehow trying to strong arm God? Am I, have I got to have the right words? See, that's all what I believe about prayer. Um, do I believe... Do I believe that I read the Bible, that the Bible will transform me? Mm. Well, do you read it? It's very simple. Yeah. So often we're trying to get the behaviours in when really we've got to work at a much deeper level. So transformation doesn't happen externally in. It happens internally out. So the change happens internally. It's kind of like that seed planted. Mm. Weeks, months can go by. And then there's this little shoot doesn't look like much but eventually it starts to grow and turn into something but we want kind of this the behavior yeah you know so um whereas beliefs govern us beliefs govern our choices beliefs govern our relationships what we believe so you really have to go on the journey of of replacing not not necessarily the whole focus like we were saying before mm. on what am I doing about my wrong beliefs. It's actually building right beliefs and they will force out the wrong ones. They and what would you say, say if people are at home and they've felt destabilised yep. within themselves and they think, well, maybe I've got a wrong belief system structure or I'm operating out of fear, um, all of the changes in, in their world, they've thought they've believed one thing, but when it's come under pressure, they realise that their behaviour suggests otherwise. Yes. Um, how would you steer them, say if you were discipling them now, what yeah. are some things that you could practically do? Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. So yeah. say right now there's anxiety. Yeah. Great anxiety. Well, the truth of it is, if you look at Philippians, uh, yeah, Philippians, it's like, 
be anxious for nothing. Mm. In fact, Jesus talks a lot about that. Even the Lord said to me a couple of days ago, I wrote in my journal, look at the birds. Mm. And I just wrote down, look at the birds. What do I want to, I'm not a bird watcher. But then I'm out walking the dog and a bird swooped past me, sat up on a tree and was eating something. Mm. And I went, it reminded me, that's right, the birds don't worry. <laughs> Look at the birds. They neither, they neither sow nor reap nor spin, yet God takes care of their needs. Mm. Look at the birds. And so not wanting to pile condemnation on people, but anxiety for the born-again believer is unbelief. Mm. And we have to look at that. Actually, it doesn't suit us. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Anxiety does not suit me. I'm really uncomfortable with it as a believer. Mm. So I have to go, okay, why am I anxious? Now, anxiety and fear are cousins. Mm. So behind fear and anxiety is a lie. Mm. So then I have to go, okay, what's the truth? One of the best questions to ask the Lord is, what's the truth about me? Mm. What's the truth about this situation, Father? And I guess even probably what would come up as you ask those questions would be, Go back to week one, identity. Oh, it's all. That's it's why you all have to work just, on it. Yeah, it all just comes together because the anxiety can be, all the fear is driven or can be from a, that need. Yeah, that exactly. Need, or an emotional need or lack there of that being met. Yeah, because sometimes we take on anxiety as a, an identity. Oh, I'm just a worry wart. Yeah. Well, how's that working for you? Mm. Do you know, does that reflect? And I kind of, you sometimes have to be very confronting to say, well, is that what Jesus is like? Mm. Do you honestly think that the Lord is up uh, in heaven sipping my lanta, you know, <laughs> needing to have, you know, antidepressants? Mm. No, not at all. So we have to go on the whole thing because the problem is if you look at the whole of who we are, if our thinking goes into a negativity driven that way, mm. we do bring a physical imbalance to our system. Yeah. And so you get like uh, psychosomatic illnesses, ulcers and all the stuff which mm. science is already saying what the Bible says for years yeah. about what that does to us. So we need to go on the journey of like, okay, God, I have to go, what am I thinking about? Mindfulness is called. Mm. Is what I'm thinking about what I should think about? And also my words create, again, what the Bible is talking about. So yeah. again... Words, thoughts, emotions, belief system. So it's like that. Okay, what's the truth? I need to say the truth. And it's so powerful when we say mm. in our own mouth, so our own ears, through all the gateways. It's interesting. Hebrews uh, 4 verse 11, through reasons of use, those who are mature have their senses trained into discerning what is good and evil. Mm. So... It's interesting, and I believe those senses is not just our spiritual ones, but also our physical, soulish, and spiritual senses need to all come into alignment. Again, Jude chapter 1, verse 22, it's like, I will present you faultless and with exceeding joy before the Father. Mm. So the Lord is so. So when I start to say what God is saying, mm. that is as old as the hills, hey. Ah. But then this is the trick, to feel. Yeah. what I should feel about that. So to bring my, see, emotions are a great servant, the worst leader on the face of the earth. Yeah. So once I get my, and that's again, discipling people, mm. am I thinking about, because I can haul that up. Yeah. I can, but the best way to change what I'm thinking about is to think something else, not mm. go, don't think about the red that's face. Right. Don't think about my addiction. Don't think about that. It's like, well, what am I going to think about? And even just a basic principle, I do that with my kids with nightmares. Or if they say, look, I'm afraid, just bring back that scripture, whatever is honourable, whatever is true. Let's yeah, yeah. think about those things. Instead of saying, Perfect. don't be afraid, what do we want to think about? Yeah, what, what are some godly to things to think about, to meditate on, to just shift that focus? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's relevant. Very mm. interesting to go to sleep. One of the, you know, because so, so, sleep is one of the most medicated things mm. in the Western world. Mm. It was interesting. So I, I, I've had people come to me with that. I said, well, let's just do this. Let's just say Psalm 23. Let's learn Psalm 23 mm. off by heart. Mm. And then let's just say that to ourselves, even internally, while I fall asleep. Yeah. Very hard to be anxious. Very hard to 
to go into all that stuff while I'm mm. saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside. It's very hard, very hard for anxiety to stand in that same space. Can I? Yeah, yeah. So we go on that, which, you know, many people need some um, external motivation. That's mm. why we're a community. That's why we're Zooming. <laughs> yeah, because the power of you saying it, you know, you're very encouraging with words, but you'll prophetically call out things in yes. people. It's truth that they know. You know, then but it, it just, echoes it. That's right, and the power of saying it, and then you think, yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm. That is true. I'm mm. an overcomer. This is going to be the best season that I've seen. So not just for yourself, but being able to call it out in other people. Yeah, because yeah. what does so if I'm not anxious, what am I? Mm. I'm loved. Yeah. Perfect love casts out all fear. We sometimes think that faith is the opposite of fear. Mm. Well, 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 I use faith to understand how much I'm loved. So what does I ask myself? So what does a love muzz? How does a love Loved muzz, muzz. <laughs> think? Love muzz love think. Muzz. How does a love muzz think? Mm. How does a love muzz then feel about muzz? Mm. Now that's very powerful. Because you're starting to use again in the physiological part of us, we're starting to hook up both, if you like, the electrical system and the chemical system are now working together mm. to recreate something in me, which is, if you like, what has already happened to me when I become born again. So I'm now a new person who isn't. So there's part of me that's not anxious, mm. that is anxious for nothing. And now my, my soul is catching up on that and then finally, externally... I'm learning to th think loved, yeah. think free, think accepted mm. and really anxiety. And I'm going, wow, when anxiety comes at me, the, mm, I don't like this, this isn't really. Because I ask people, so how's being anxious working for you? Mm. How's that going? <laughs> Not well. Not well. <laughs> Not well. Okay. So how's being, and you have sometimes I think, so what is, so this is a big question I ask people often is like, what does a loved you look like? Mm. And deeper level, what does it feel like? What is a joyful, what does a joyful Lou look like in the mm. third person? Mm. What does a joyful Lou feel like? Because sometimes what we're doing is we're saying emotions are wrong. They're not wrong. They need to be used as a tool to build something. Mm. And something I probably haven't uh, premised before. We must understand that our soul, that part of our area is neutral. It's not a good nor evil. It just depends who's hands it's in mm. and believe me my thoughts are either in my hands or they're in the lord's hands my emotions are either in my hands or they're in the lord's hands mm. and i can quickly tell whose they are you know which is again going back to last week talk about abiding mm. am i humbling myself and letting god come in or am i being prideful and shutting me out or am i have got faith that he is with me and that he loves me and that there's nothing out of his control in my world. Mm. Nothing. Even COVID-19 hasn't caught the Lord by surprise. Yeah. And I love, there's a song that I often sing and it's a United Pursuit song, Thankful, but there's a part that I think that it's not even part of the lyrics. You've but made it up, just, have you? No, no, they <laughs> sing it, but it's not. I think they were just singing um, free worship. If God's not worried, I'm not worried. And I often will sing that over myself. Yeah, you God's know, not God's worried. not worried. Why do I worry? It's you know, true. And that's, that's the truth the lyric, of it. But that is the truth. And I that's think not that's not a truth. A really that's, a, that's not cliche. Nah. That is a fundamental belief. Mm. It's not, see, that, can, that needs to go from just words yeah. to a thoughts. Like, what does that look like? Mm. What does that feel like to a belief? It's like, yep, he's not worried, so mm. I'm not worried. A mm. default, like an immediate default. Yeah. And that's, what, that's discipleship so that my defaults, my automatics, it's the same as muscle memory. Mm. I repeat it and I repeat it and repeat it because, like I say, practice doesn't make perfect. It makes permanent. Mm. Default, 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 default. And so there is a, sort of a, an in, intentionality about the beginning of changing, changing that, but more and more as I go through it becomes automatic. Yeah. Because it's a little bit, when we come born again, we're a baby and we need to go through the processes of someone helping us. But the thing is, you know what, Lou and myself, we couldn't walk. 
we just couldn't do it. Yeah. But when one day we came up to a table like this, pulled ourselves up, took one step, fell down, it's not like our parents go, you know what? I don't think you've got the gift of walking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you have that, but that's not true, is it? Mm. It was actually within our DNA yeah. to walk. We look at our parents, we look at our father, and he walks. Mm. Okay, so at the beginning, I might stumble, but it doesn't change my spiritual DNA. Mm. It doesn't change what God believes about me. It doesn't change that. So as I learn to believe like Jesus believes... I find out, wow, this this is actually my default. This is actually what... It's how I've been created. This is how I've been yeah. created. Mm. So when it, like Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it's like, don't be conformed to this world, mm. but was it... Transformed. Transformed or renewed. Yeah. Back to the original mm. design by the renewing of your mind. Deeper than that, actually, get back to thinking about believing what you should believe. Mm. And if you read on, see in Romans, is it 14, 15, 14, 14, 15, I always get them confused. May the God of all hope fill you in believing with all joy again, mm. because right believing should cause joy. Yeah. So if what I think or what I believe does not make me joyful, it's not God. Yeah. So if I look at a situation and I'm not joyful, expectant, like people have asked me, Mars, you've just transitioned to leadership in a church at the worst all-time circumstances. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, there was – we didn't have uh, – and I don't want – it's no judgment of any of the team or anything, but we didn't have uh, any of the streaming stuff mm. or any of the mm. technology or even a strong team to do that. Fortunately, there have been people that have been able to step up and yeah. God is amazing. But, you know, what? Like even – even some other online stuff and some pastoral, you know, to connect has not been there. There's not been some mechanisms. And so we've had to quickly run to get that up and happening. But people ask me, how are you going with it? And I, my answer is, this is my answer, is that I am unrealistically or even illogically excited. I love that. that is that now your permanent sign-off, your yeah. email? Yeah. So good. Yeah. So good. Well, uh, unrealistically optimistic. Optimistic, yeah. <laughs> because our God is. Yeah, yeah. Our God is unreasonably. And he's not taken by surprise. And when we know we're in his will and we're, do, you know, we're operating out of that place of just I'm living for God, then he's going to work it for good. Yeah. He's gonna, he wants to see his church built. Yeah, yeah. The timing... You can either look at it, this is the worst timing or this is the best and God's going to use this to see the church explode. Which is, again, an interesting... Again, we're getting back to looking at life, not how the way he sees it, because God doesn't see things good or evil. Mm. You know, we were never meant to have that understanding. God knew that that would blow our fuse, cause confusion between yeah. us. See, God looks at everything as life. Mm. See, he doesn't, he doesn't see anything. Even when, even when Jesus talked about what we would call people dying, he would call them asleep. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> She's only asleep. She's been dead for four days. Lazarus, he stinks. Oh, I don't know. You know it's like, <laughs> oh, that only happened so that I could demonstrate. Yeah. So it just never falls into anxiety. Yes. It's like it, it falls asleep during storms. Like it must have been. I was either a, such a ride for the disciples or really tempted to go into great anxiety mm. because of the way Jesus operated. Carefree, you feed them. Yeah. And they're like, we don't have the money, we don't have the means. Well, then let's just show me what you got. Mm. And he takes what we have, as in, and it's an over and over testimony for every believer that God uses what we have. So good. It's what we have plus him. Yeah. Who Multiplies. Is, who is unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> and does unreal things. Now, when you see that and you become a, you actually have your focus on, and that's another. Another aspect of our belief system is like, what do I believe about God? Mm. Is he good? Is he bad? Is he judgmental? And our God concept is a massive part. That's huge. That's a huge other side of yeah. what we work with people is our God concept. What do I believe about God? Mm. And at my worst often is revealed. My, what I believe about what God. What I truly believe yeah. about God. So at my worst when my prayer isn't answered or it's not answered the way I think or it's taking too long, mm. You know, um, 
Interesting. We, we have a question here. We'll send those out. Yeah. Is one of the last questions is uh, one thing I fear about God. What is the one thing we fear about? And nearly the most overwhelming answer that I get from this, and this will probably wreck the question, so if you get this, is that, that one thing I fear about God is that he will take or take, like I mean cause someone to die or kill, mm. one of my family members in order to get my attention. Mm. And so many people have that default. Mm. In fact, when I shared that in a, a group, a guy comes up to me and says, I can't believe that you said that, Muz, because I'm actually sponsoring a missionary in a third world country. And the reason why he's doing that, why he's got his kids in that situation, is that he actually believes if he doesn't do that, God will take one of his kids. Wow. Now, who would want to serve a God like that? Yeah. And that's where you talk about the lie. You know, the lie. What's the, the lie? fear is the lie. Yeah. Where in the world does that come from? Yeah. Mm. Where in the world? So you imagine, you imagine why I can understand why people don't evangelize. Yeah. Why people, because their, their own concept of God is faulty. Their own belief system about God is faulty. Again, that's been referenced mm. from uh, a misread, misinterpreted experiences in life. Yeah. Do you know, bad things happen because the reason why bad things happen is because God is angry. Yeah. Or even, I guess, people can believe the lie, if I do this for God, I'm going to have a loss. Or, you know, that yes. then the, that the devil will come and get me in this way, which, again, is another lie that you can invest into as well. Yeah. And just even as we're talking, my prayer is that those that are listening at home, that by his Holy Spirit, that lies are just coming up now to yeah, the yeah. surface. Like, let them identify we call them out. You may be thinking something's popped up into your head and you realise you're actually operating out of a lie. And for me, some things I've thought were God truths that were actually lies that I was operating out of. Um, and when I began to find that I'd walk out of fear, but behind that fear was a lie. Yes. And when you pull out that lie and for those at home, it's then replacing it with the truth, which I think we covered whether it was last week or this week, it's go find the God truth that's the opposite of that. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because if you kill the lie, fear will die. Yeah. It's very. It's not that hard. Believe me, Christianity, a child needs to be able to do it. Mm. Otherwise, it's only for the gifted, the Amen. smart, the talented. But it's not. It's not. That's why I think God called me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the scripture. <laughs> he chooses the foolish things of this world to oh, confound yes. the wise. That's we qualify, my... Lou. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, God bless you, Murray. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, Pastor Lou. Thank you for Coast. your time. Bless you. Yeah, from In Life Church, the fresh, brand new church. Yeah, fresh season for us. Amazing. Amen. May God bless it and do great things Amen. in this season. Thanks, guys. Bye.